we had a, a number file viewer who asked us uh, this precisely the question here: What's the minimum number of points you need to um, to avoid relegation? You consider a nightmare season, okay? So the nightmare season has um, basically the top eighteen teams all on equal points and as many points as they could have got, having all beaten the bottom two teams. So then you're in a really bad situation. You're the 18th team, you're going to get relegated having got a lot of points. How many points is that going to turn out as? So let's suppose all of the top 18 all win their home games against the, the rest of the top 18. Okay, so that's 17 wins. Okay, and they lose their corresponding away games, obviously. So they get 17 wins from that. Everybody beats the bottom two. Okay, so they get um, four more wins from that. So they get 17 plus four wins, right? Okay, that's 21. Okay, they get three points for a win. So at times, so that's 63 points. Okay, so in this nightmare season, you'd end up with 63 points. Okay, so 64 points guaranteed you don't fall victim of the nightmare season. So in the nightmare season, I finished with 63 points, but my goal difference got me relegated. Yeah, exactly. Actually, it, it, yeah, it could be goal difference, could be goals scored, actually. Um, it could be as bad as that. You've just shown me a way where 63 points got me relegated, yeah. which is inconceivable. Can 63 points win me the title? Um, yes, I think so, yes. So everyone drawing and, and, and one, one team wins one game. So you get 37 draws and you win, so you win it with 40 points. So you can get relegated yeah. with 63. <laughs> yes. You can get relegated with 63 and you can win it with 40. Yes, yes, yes. So once we got to that, I started to ask a few more questions. I was like, well, what's the, prob what's the probability of maybe that you go down on, on 40 points, for example? So I started to ask slightly different questions. What's the probability you win the league on, on uh, you know, 80 points? That kind of thing. I started off with a, a very crude model where I assumed that every, every outcome of every game had equal probability. So that it was, uh, you know, probability of a third that, one team would win, probability of a, a third that it would be a draw, and probability of a third that the other team would win. And try to evaluate from that what the likely league tables would be. Well, let me give you a flavour for how this might have worked. So if the, the only thing I could do is two teams, <laughs> a two-team league. So if you had a two-team league, um, there are nine possible outcomes, okay? There's nine possible different scenarios you could have, because each game has a, you basically have two games, Okay, and each game has, has three different outcomes. So it's three squared is the number of outcomes you can have. Um, and those, those all lead to a different, different principle, a, a league table, okay? So in this two team league table, the different points totals you could have are six, zero. Okay, so top team gets six, second team gets uh, zero. Four, one, three, three. Okay, which is a bit like the nightmare season, right? Um, and two, two. This, this last one is where, where both games are a draw. Okay, so how many times does each of these happen out of the nine? So it turns out that this happens twice, okay? This happens four times, there's four ways this can happen. This happens twice and this happens once, okay? So obviously the most probable league table in this two, two, uh, two team uh, scenario is, is the four one league table. But of course, the minute I start to extrapolate this to to more, more teams, it becomes really problematic. It actually turns out that I need, when I, for a 20 team uh, league, like, like the Premier League is, the number of possible scenarios is it's much more than nine, it's three to the 380. Okay, so it's the number of games, which is 380, uh, and, and there's three outcomes for each game. So the number of possible things you could have happen is three to the 380, which is, you know, that's that's pretty big. <laughs> okay. How big's that number? Yeah, it's about a Google, I would say. It's roughly a Google, a bit more than a Google. But uh, so it's big. It's big, yeah. So it's it's way too big for, for you to be able to do this analytically. So quickly I chatted to my uh, friend David, a statistician over in Matt, and he he uh, yeah, he was like, no chance. Okay, in fact, if you could do this analytically, then that would be a really interesting paper, right? So so I quickly abandoned that, we realized the best thing to do was simulation. Okay, use this idea of Monte Carlo simulation. I talked to Adam, uh, we got together, we started thinking about that. So the first thing we did is we did a simulation based on, um, on, on these equal probabilities. Um, we, we had the data on that, I can show you it. Yeah, like, so you actually ran a million seasons of that, did you? Yeah, we where, did. Where every team is kind of created equally. Yeah, every team is equal, yeah. yeah. The, the, the ideal scenario where all things are equal, nobody's got more money than anybody else, anything like that. It's, it, it's the, the kind of ideal. 
Okay, so this is this is what we got. It was doing quite well on relegation data. Okay, so the, the sort of mean number of points that you would get relegated on for the 18th place team was about 42. It's kind of on the high side, but then we're making all teams equal, so it's kind of, but it, was, it, it wasn't horrendous. The, the relegation data was not horrendous. You could see a team got relegated on, on 50 points there, quite high, but, but okay. Where it sort of failed a little bit was on the championship data. You know, the mean number of points to win the title in these seasons was 60. 65.5, which is very low. You wouldn't, you, you wouldn't win the premiership for that. Yeah, exactly. And, and the reason is, of course, all teams are not equal, right? So, so it's, it, it, it's, there's too much equality here, and, and that's not what the Premier League is really like. Uh, so then we thought, okay, we need, to, we need to sort of skew the model a little bit. The next stage was we, we tried this model involving a tanch function. So instead of the probabilities being um, equal for each outcome, it would favour the better team slightly. Uh, so, so very roughly, so we had, um, the, the, what we did was we said, if, we, if we've got team A playing team B, okay, then we had the probability of A winning, we had equal to this. We said it was the tanch of A minus B over some weighting factor plus X naught, and oh, I've run out of space. <laughs> Then we said that the probability that A wins was the tanch of A minus B over W plus X naught. I'll explain what these are in a minute. Plus one over two. Okay, so tanch X naught here has to be minus a third. Okay, so, so A and B here are basically the, the, the rankings of the teams. Okay, so the way we did it, the best team would have an A of 20 and the worst team would have an A of one. If you see what I mean. Okay, so this is pushing, this number is becoming big if A is good, right? Okay, and W is some sort of weighting factor, which we did to, to sort of, to make the model favor the good teams more or good teams less. So what this looks like, I can just draw you a picture of what this looks like. Um, this, is, this is a tanch function. Tanch functions go between one and minus one. Okay, so they just interpolate with a kind of a sharp kink. And um, this basically t gives you that. So, so if, if A is much better than B, this is probability is going towards one. And if A is much worse than B, this probability is going towards zero. Okay, and if A and B are roughly the same, this probability is about a third. Okay, so that's the idea of, of this model. Okay, so we ran it with that. Okay, and we got some more data out. We did another million simulations and this is what we got. <laughs> okay, so we did it with two different values of W. Uh, we did it for W equals 10 and W equals 20. W equals 10 was given rubbish data, okay? So W equals 20 was, was much more realistic and it was not a bad model actually. Now we're getting much more realistic data for, for the team winning the league, still a little bit on the low side. 80 points was the, was the mean to, to win the league. Teams were getting relegated on a mean of around 32 points. Okay, so not bad. So it was quite a good model really. So we were quite happy with that. You know, you were still getting some team, you know, sometimes somebody was getting 110 points winning the league. This is actually a pretty good model. And it's, it's given quite nice data. But then we got more sophisticated again. And this, is, this, is where, this was the final version. Let's suppose, let's take a game. So we, we literally did every single individual game. Uh, so let's suppose, take Liverpool versus Manchester United. Okay, so we've got LFC versus Man U at Anfield. Okay, so it's Liverpool are at home. What we did was we took each team, each, each team's expected goals was based on a, a Poisson distribution. So we basically said the chances of, let's take Liverpool. So basically the, Probability of Liverpool scoring K goals, K is some integer between 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, right, was given by a Poisson distribution. So it's given by e to the minus lambda, lambda to the K over K factorial. Okay, now the question is what is lambda? That's then dependent on the data from the previous season. Okay, so we, there would be a lambda for Liverpool at home versus Manchester United based on the previous season. So you took data from the 2017-18 Premiership yeah. season. Yeah. So you'd have a similar thing for Manchester United as well. We'd have a similar distribution, but with a different lambda. And it would be based on how Manchester United away at Liverpool. So it'd be a lambda for Manchester United away at Liverpool. But what data can you draw on that other than the exact corresponding fixture from the previous so, year? Okay, so let's see how we work out what the lambda is for, for Liverpool at home to Man United. Okay, so what we did was, was the following. They're at home. So the first thing, so... So LFC uh, v Man U, okay, and we're interested in LFC's lambda, okay. So the first thing, they're at home. So we take the average number of goals 
scored at home by anybody. So we're factoring in home advantage. Okay, so what's the average number of goals that teams scored at home? Across so the whole league. Across the whole league, okay? So average number of goals, so the, the average number of home, home goals, four. <laughs> okay, so home goals, four per game. Across the whole, whole league. Yep. Okay, so that's kind of the baseline. Okay, now we need to remember that it's Liverpool that are playing. Okay, so we take uh, Liverpool's attack strength. We're interested in how many goals Liverpool are going to score, so we need to factor in their attack strength. So we multiply it by what we call the, the sort of Liverpool's attack strength at home. And this is exactly what the bookies do, by the way. And then the other thing we need to factor in is Manchester United's defensive strength. Okay, so we'll talk about what they are in a sec, but we need the Man U defensive strength. So these are kind of weighting factors, right? So you, you, you've got the sort of, if, if, you know, if, if there were nothing weird about Liverpool's attack and nothing weird about Man U's defence, they'd get the average. Right? But of course, Liverpool's attack might be good, Man United's defence might be good, you need to allow for that. To get the attack strength, so LFC's attack strength, okay, it's quite simple. You just take the number, so the average number of, um, of LFC goals at home, four, divided by the average number of goals at home for anybody. Okay, so it's basically a comparison how much, how much better are Liverpool than the average? in terms of scoring goals at home. So we divide it by the average number of home goals, league-wide. Yeah, so that's the attack strength. How much bit? So if Liverpool are scoring more than the average at home, they'll get a good attack strength for home goals. Similarly, for, um, for the, for the uh, Man United's defence strength, we basically calculate the um, Manchester United's, you know, how, what's the average number of goals they concede away, and we divide it by the average number of goals that away teams concede, full stop. Okay, so if Man United are, are conceding uh, fewer than the average away team, then th that's good for them. They'll have a, they'll, you know, th th that'll favour them. Okay, and, and stop Liverpool from scoring. And this is the model. And if you do it for both teams, okay, and uh, yeah, and that, that's it really. So um, of course, the, the model does seem to then favour how good <coughs> teams are home or away. Like not just generic. Yeah, it does. So, so, we, so the home advantage. So, for, for example, a team like Liverpool, which which I think benefits a lot from its from its home crowd, um, you would see that it would it would it would know about that, right? It's seeing the the, the, the improvement in the home performances. Um, the things it, the thing it doesn't do is the, the sort of weaknesses are that it's always constant. Okay, it doesn't allow for form fluctuations in form changes within a game. You don't get any of that. Right? Sometimes the, the, things that happen in a game, you know, can, things can, can so things that happen in a game can affect the outcome. For example, like somebody gets sent off or an injury, or there's none of that. It's really just using the the sort of the averages based on the previous season. But Tony, aren't fluctuations like that, like the crazy things that happen in a game that are unpredictable, already baked into the data? Yeah, I mean, they kind of yeah, they, they kind of are. I mean, this is why this is this is roughly the model that, that the bookies do use, and it works pretty well. Um, and and so it's it's it yeah it, it it does a good job. This 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 does seem to reproduce largely the expected goals of a, of a given team. It does tend to follow a Poisson distribution.